everybody, my name is Fortifier and welcome to episode 18 of the Contemporary Corner. Today, we're going to be talking about Lethal Enforcers 2 Gunfighters, a western game for the Sega CD that is also a light gun game. This is a really, really interesting game. Uh, this is the continuation of Lethal Enforcers, which is something that we haven't seen since all the way back in my early days on YouTube where we covered Lethal Enforcers on the Genesis. So it'll be really interesting to, to continue this. This is a game that I've wanted to check out for a while. It's just been sitting on the shelf. I don't even remember where I got it. I think I got it from Rad Junk, which is a store down in Fort Walton Beach, Florida, that I used to go to all the time before I got stationed here in Las Vegas. And if you are in that area, I definitely suggest going there. You'll always hear me do a uh, an obvious plant because they're very important to me. They they helped to build my collection of where it is now, which is very impressive. Anyway, this is a light gun game, meaning that we're not gonna be able to experience it the way that God intended. Unfortunately, I don't have a CRT set up here right now. Uh, I'm changing that after I get rid of this big ass bed, I'm gonna get a smaller bed so that we have more room to extend my desk out or maybe even replace my desk so that I can have a CRT right next to me and, and get that stream setup going on. But for right now, we're hopefully gonna be able to use the crosshairs. If not, we're gonna have to react to some footage, which I'm totally okay with, but um, I'm gonna try to play it the right way with the controller. I know it worked on the Genesis one, there's no reason why it shouldn't work on this one. So when you think of Lethal Enforcers, you think of Konami's definitive light gun experience. Namco had Time Crisis, you think of House of the Dead, you think of Sega, right? So this was this is the one that always stood out to me. I'm sure the Konami had other games. They made tons of arcade games, especially a lot of these companies. They would do a lot of uh, carnival-based games or they do ones that you kill people or monsters. So this was, but this is the only one that I know from like Konami. This is the one that stands out. And then whenever it came over to America, they put it on the Genesis, the Sega CD, and a bunch of other consoles. I am looking for a very unique PS1 game though. It's called Lethal Enforcers 1 and 2. And as both of the games, I'm very interested to see how it plays out. I did watch Nintendo Complete's long play of it just to see if it looked any different. And it looks like a really faithful translation from the arcade to the PS1. So that's something I'm actually really interested in checking out. Anyway, never heard of this game. I'm willing to try it out. But judging by looking at the back, it's falling short because of Sega CD. If there's anything I've learned is that Sega CD really, really sucks at taking arcade games and making them look decent if it involves shooting shit. Take a look at Mad Dog McCree. Compare these two, like, versions of this. The one on the left is the original Mad Dog McCree from American Laserdisc games. The one on the right, that is the Sega CD one. You can't really tell what anything is, and in a game where you have to shoot exact things, that can be pretty problematic. But right now, we're focusing on this. Let's go and crack open the case and see what's inside. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at my copy of Lethal Enforcers 2 Gunfighters. Here we go, Lethal Enforcers 2 Gunfighters, $15, not a bad deal. Konami, you can see me in the in the sky, you see that? Great artwork, I actually like what we're, uh, what we're seeing here. This is well done. I don't know what the actual cabinet looks like. Uh, I'll fade it in real quick. Compatible with the Justifier game accessory, sold separately. Licensed by Sega. MA-13, which is the something rating committee, probably video game rating committee or something. Authorized by Sega. I, I just really can't get over how efficient Sega is with these colors. It seems like they had a convention for everything. 32X was yellow, Game Gear was purple, and Sega CD was blue. Genesis just kind of had their logo, but they did change it halfway through the lifespan. I have no clue why, probably so they can be more edgy. Let's go and flip this over, see what we're dealing with on the back. I clean up my desk and it looks tremendously better, doesn't it? Probably saw some messy things in the other days. All right, Konami, Lethal Enforcers 2 Gunfighter, strap on your shooting irons, Greenhorn. Uh, straight from the Smash Arcade hit to your home, the state-of-the-art shooting game follows the tradition of the first Lethal Enforcers home in coin-op hit. It features superior digitized graphics, better character movement, and awe-inspiring CD quality music and sound effects. Your brave sheriff challenged to protect innocent citizens. Powerful weapons like the shotgun, Gatling gun, 12, 12 round rifle, and even a cannon can make your job easier. You'll need all the firepower you can muster in five heated stages, the bank robbery, stagecoach holdup, saloon showdown, train robbery, and the hideout. Between rounds, you'll be treated to the bonus stages. We can shoot bottles or face off some bad hombres. That is Spanish for hombres in an old fashioned showdown. Throw out the accuracy scores. The goal here is to survive. That was like one of the biggest deals for me because the, the light guns aren't always accurate. These, these things are old, right? So over time, they're not going to be perfect. So I'm glad they threw out the scores. That's really, really cool. If you hit an opponent with a grazing shot, you'll have to shoot again quick to put him out of commission before they retaliate. When the dust settles and the tumbleweeds roll by, only the most skilled gunfighters will be left standing. For one or two seasoned sheriffs, one or two players, and a bunch of stuff. This looks like absolute dog shit. I don't think we're going to enjoy this a lot. This is, this is rough. But we're gonna we're gonna hold our thoughts until we actually play it. All Sega CD games come with this little foam thing. It's actually pretty nice. It just kind of fits in there. 
Uh, let's see, Latham Force is two gunfighters. It's a very subdued disc. You can't really see what's going on, but whatever it is, what it is. All right, let's go ahead and get this manual out and see what it's all about. That's like the most efficient one hand pull I think I've ever done in my life. Okay, cool. Please, game. I hate the boxes for Sega CD, they're so shit. The player one gun, the justifier and the player two gun. Uh, I don't know if there's any difference. Oh, they daisy chain it. So if you don't know, the justifier daisy chains with the other gun. I think it's the blue gun, which is the main one, the player one gun. And then it's like purple or pink or something is the player two one, and it daisy chains through the bottom. I don't own one of these. I'd have to look into it. I may have even gotten the color wrong, but uh, I'll double check and I'll put a picture right there. We got ourselves a Model 2 Sega CD, which is the version I'm actually using. Uh, looks pretty good. Everything's pretty self-explanatory. It gives you all the options. Um, this is a great manual. I mean, it's not really Tony's story. There really isn't much to it. You're just a Wild Western guy going and shooting people. And when I mean people, I mean a metric fuck ton of people who don't believe in social distancing. Uh, when you play games like this, it's a egregiously over-established amount of people hiding in the backgrounds of these levels. It's really fucking dumb. But it's fun because Japan, right? We got some weapons here. The 50 caliber sharp, the rifle, the shotgun, the gallon gun, and a fucking cannon, bro. Straight from the Civil War. Uh, all of our levels. Yep, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, don't shoot people with it. Oh, we got some pro strats. That game's hard as fuck. Sparkster? I've seen this game before and it looks really fun. What are the advertisements do we have? Konami, game hint, and tip line. Well, you know what I'm going to do there. The call you are attempting to place is not allowed from this line. Please dial 611 for customer service or dial 1-800-331-0500 from a landline phone. Desde esta línea no se permite hacer esta llamada. Favor de marcar 611 para comunicarse con el servicio al cliente o 1-800-331-0500. Desde un teléfono fijo. Message 10, US 01 LV. Don de esta and have a nice day. And that's pretty much all that we need to say. In the first game, you kind of just pop up while eating your bagel and you're like, there's crime afoot and go outside and start blasting people with a snubbed, you know, whatever caliber pistol that you're using. In this game, you go back to the Wild West and you're shooting as a sheriff through all of these levels, the bank heist. The train robbery, the stagecoach holdup, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. So let's go ahead and pop this in. I'm very excited, but I'm not because I, I'm kind of afraid of what we're going to see. At the end of the day, it's probably a decent game. We can't judge it without watching it. It's not going to be the same as the arcade. It's not going to be the same as the PlayStation 1 version, but I guarantee you it'll be something that we can slightly maybe enjoy. Let's check it out. Alrighty, here we go. So we are going to be playing the game. Ah, oh, sick like CD, man. <laughs> I love Sega CD. What happens if we push the start button? It's been a minute since I've actually popped this up. I'm pretty sure that it just starts the game. Sega. It's also a ticking time bomb to see if it works. I, I really hate the Sega CD. It's not really that great. Lethal Enforcers 2, Gunfight. Okay. I didn't want to read that. That's fine. Konami. Konami. The best in the West. Pat, Dog, Bat, Kid, Jim, K, Ben, and Joe. I'm about to fuck those guys' scores up. Oh my god, it already looks bad. Oh, I was so worried about- Oh, it's so gross! It's so gross! What? Oh my god, it's- oh, that's such a huge pet peeve of mine. Center the two. Oh, that's disgusting. That's disgusting. Oh, I hate it. There's a lot of stuff they could have done right, but oh well. See, player one joypad, so it will let us do it. Let's check out the option mode and see what we got, and also what buttons do I need to hit, because none of them are working. Start. Game mode arcade, difficulty normal, sound mode, stereo, sound check mode, exit. I kind of want to hear the compression of the, uh... The voice. Ah, oh, it's gotta load. That's not too bad. Reload, reload, reload. 
I'm sorry, I'm an asshole. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead next. Let's go ahead and start the game. See what it's all about. I feel like the only thing that's going to be lacking is the artwork. The rest of it's pretty. I, I'd be okay with it to be honest. Come on, Sheriff. Oh my God! It just throws you right into it. Jesus fuck! Could crosshairs. Hello. Do you know what's going on? Oh wow. Oh shit. How do I reload? Okay, so it's the third button. Shotty! There we go. Already fucking dying. I just did though. Why are you keeping- Is everybody gonna use the same shitty pickup lines? Ah, fuck! There's a lot of shit going on. I feel like there's more shit in this game than the other one. God damn. <laughs> fuck. Is that the only voice clip they went with? <laughs> That's the only voice quote that we've got here. Get the bronze out of the board! Get the bronze out! Please don't just say that nonstop throughout the whole fucking game. That would be so irritating. That would be beyond irritating. Is this a cannon? Am I- Wait, 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 that's a cannonball! That's a cannonball! Who fucking fires off a cannon in a bank? Take that, varmint. Fuck your knee. These scenes are also a lot shorter than the other ones, too. This is interesting. I mean, it's a pretty fun game. There's just a lot of shit going on, and the load times are kind of killing it for me. Obviously, you wouldn't see this in the, uh, in the arcade, but damn. Head shoots or no shoots. Damn, son, chill. Fuck you, stop. How was that? You had a gun. It's kind of hard to tell who's good and evil in the Wild West, because everybody's got a fucking gun. I think it boils down to if they're wearing a mask or not. Let's see how far we can make it. We're not going to overstay our welcome with this. God, man. I'm going to overlay footage from this exact scene in the arcade game. See if you see anything just a, just a little bit different. Oh my god, this is hard. Gallon gun. Oh my god. Where's this guy hide these things at? Pretty dope. I'm enjoying it. I think it's a good game. I think it's pretty fun. I might actually go back and give Lethal Enforcers one a chance, because obviously the joypad, it, it's not inc that hard to do. The fuck? Shit! Why do these people walk in front of Crossfire like it's the most normal occurrence ever? I will never understand. Alright, go for center mass shots here. What are you doing? Just stay there and hide, don't pop out. That's all you gotta do. Music's badass in this game. Good job. This looks like it screams the boss is gonna pop out right here and shoot me really hard with something. Called it. Did you know that if you shoot a bullet at a cannonball, 
the bullet wins. Did you know that? That's physics. Physics in motion. At least there's a fucking health bar on this guy. In the first game, you kind of just have to like... Just have to kind of like... Wishful think, you know what I'm saying? It's be much easier with an actual gun. But you do own. I do own a justifier. But I don't have a way to do it. Is this guy a confederate? Double fuck him then. Fuck off! He's a dick. It's not how cannons work, man. Who's reloading the cannons? I'm gonna start playing this like it's a damn. I'm just gonna start pushing both buttons. Fuck off. Ah, oh, fuck. This would be so much easier with a with a gun. Again, sorry. This time, you know, in the old house, we were able to do it. I was able to just record it the old-fashioned way, but not really a thing here. Like I said, I'm gonna be replacing the bed behind me so that I can actually have a CRT set up. Which is exciting, because that's how I want to play a lot of these old retro games. It's not going to be like a Sony Trinitron or one of the really, really expensive ones, but... We can at least beat this guy. Fuck, fuck, fuck. It's hard! Damn, son! This is the first boss! Thank goodness. Two more credits to spare. Great accuracy, that. 54%. It's posse! I know, I don't know what you expect me to do. So now we get a stagecoach robbery. A stage hold up, yeah, there we go. What happens? Humor me. Who's leading the horses now? Fuck! Can I just shoot the horses? These fucking horses! Oh my god! What the, dude? Wow! The Indians are on the bad people's side too. This is fucking monotonous. Sit down. This is hard. Holy cow! I think we've seen everything we need to see from it, though. This is very. This is pretty good. It's hard. It'd be a lot easier with a light gun, obviously, but um. That's how this game's meant to be played anyway. It's just gonna bring us back to title, that's what it should do. Oh cool, I get to enter my name. Sheriff Fuck, here for duty. And Konami. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. I'm not gonna put in cheat code or anything. I think we've seen everything that we need to see with this game. Uh, let's go ahead and rate it, because there's a lot of stuff going on, and I feel like we could talk about that. Alright, so we checked out the game. I know I didn't spend too much time on it, and there is a reason. It's an arcade game. So realistically, if it doesn't captivate you in the first five to ten minutes, there's really no point in continuing to put money inside of it. So I thought, hey, ten minutes of gameplay, more than enough to justify the entire experience because that's ultimately what it is, right? Uh, when I was a kid, my grandfather gave me five dollars, I go in the arcade and I'd have to budget it between games such as, you know, Space Invaders or the, the basketball games or the coin pushers or DDR Max or the X-Men four person cabinet. Uh, House of the Dead, Time Crisis, Tekken Tag, stuff like that. And most of the time, if it was a big name game, it was a dollar. Well, I mean, Silent Scope was a dollar, but the other light gun games, if they were the cheap ones, um, were 50 cents. So, I wasn't gonna put 15, you know, fucking credits, or whatever five dollars divided by 50 cents is, probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten plays, right? Give or take, I'm doing the math. I, I think that's how you do math. I'm just a boy. But anyway, let's go ahead and rate the game. We're gonna go ahead and start with the case. This is gorgeous. This case is beautiful. If you saw this on the shelf at least this way, you'd be interested. If you saw it this way, probably not so much, but we're not here to dissect the logo and see if the logo is cool. That is fucking cool artwork and you know it is. This bitch gets an A. Gameplay. Unfortunately, from here on out, this is where we're gonna kinda dock it a little bit. Um, I can't judge the arcade game itself. We have to judge the port. So my opinion on the real game is that all of this would probably be A's. Trust me, the music is great, the sound effects are great, and the gameplay is great, but we're not playing it on the arcade 
playing it on the Sega CD. So we got to think of it like that. We got to we got to address it in that format. So gameplay C, the controls. There's just way too much shit coming at you to be able to move the controller side to side. Not everybody's family was made of money. They couldn't always afford a justifier. I don't know anybody who would go out of their way to buy this game without having a justifier. Um, but in that situation where you were one of the kids who didn't, it'd be almost impossible to play it on the regular difficulty. You saw me having to move around. I, it's almost like knowing where everything pops out. And it's kind of stupid. Plus, I did watch some of the footage from the arcade game and they do not say you can't hit the broad side of a barn! You can't hit the broad side of a barn! You can't hit the broad side of a barn! You can't hit the broad side of a barn! They don't say it 800 times like that in the game. Matter of fact, they don't really say many things outside of Ugh! You know, getting shot and shit. So, I'm gonna give the gameplay a C. The artwork. The artwork is very muddy compared to the original game, and that is something that you're gonna see religiously across the Sega CD. Not everybody is Sonic CD. Not every game that came out is going to be as crisp as Sonic CD or, you know, Cliffhanger even looks good for all accounts. And when you think of FMV games, those still look pretty decent too, with the exception of Mad Dog McCree, which looked like total fuck shit. No joke. This game is a faithful translation of it, but it doesn't look as good. I'm going to give the artwork a C. Music. I mean, the music's music. It doesn't sound the same. It's a little bit more compressed. Uh, I'm gonna give it a B though. It, it it still captures it, you know, the best way that it can. This isn't. I I I get frustrated because the Sega CD is actually a really strong, powerful piece of equipment, and it just didn't pull off music well. It's hard to explain because I haven't played that many Sega CD games for obviously YouTube projects, but I played tons of them for Twitch, and. Sonic CD is the golden standard of, of Sega CD games for me, and that soundtrack's fucking gorgeous. So this game had no excuse, especially from such a name brand company like Konami, a big fucking deal. I'm gonna give the music a C. Fun! Yes and no. I can see the replayability of it if you have friends. That's literally the only thing that would keep me playing it, uh, would be to challenge somebody and get a high score. It's cool that they got rid of the, uh, the whole accuracy system so that you don't have to use a controller and then hope you don't miss a lot, but I, even then, I didn't pass the first stage on Lethal Enforcers on the Genesis because of the accuracy issues, and I don't know if that was my CRT's fault or if it was the gun's fault, but either way, at the end of the day, it was annoying as hell to have to deal with that. Um, I don't really think it's incredibly fun, I think it's just a baseline, you know, light gun game conversion, so I'm gonna give it a C with an overall score. Of a C. Not a bad game, really really cool that they made it a western, uh, but it, it just feels the same, you know, it's it's not bad, I'm not gonna say it's a bad game. Uh, definitely don't try to play it with the controller, but at least the controller feels like it moves a little bit quicker. I would suggest if you want to play this, try to figure out MAME, or just go, you know, go to Japan and hope to god you find it, because that's really the only way that you're gonna do it. But anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video, I know it was brief. Um, but we didn't really have that much to say about it because it's a simple game. So, as always, guys, from my family to your family, good energy, good vibes, fortify out. If you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and down in the comment section below, tell me what I should be playing. I got a wall of games, and I'm always interested to try something new. So, take care, guys. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the other side.